is 2099. These are the files of Kent, the key environmental, non-judgmental task force. Director of Operations, Professor Nebulous. Right. Thermal processing completed. Now, if I can just override the original programming... Thus far, that's good. Gemini? Yes, Professor Nebulous? Open the hatch, please. I am obeying. <gasps> no. It cannot be. Oh, my bod, no. Your Bendix twin tap has malfunctioned. I can see that. Thank you, Gemini. This washing's still filthy. <sighs> They wanted to erect a statue of me in Hyde Park, you know. Big gold one. That revolved. Now I'm running a government department so underfunded it has to take in laundry. How the hell did it come to this? Fall from grace, direct result of your accidental destruction of the Isle of Wight. I was trying to move it to the left, so it would get more sun. All I'm saying, Rory, is your report for Professor Nebulus was due at 11pm, and it's now 11.04. Paula, you're not my supervisor. In fact, I'm your supervisor. So why do you have to be so anal? I am not anal. I already told you that on the 12th, 19th, 23rd, and then again on St Kylie's Day. So a report's a few minutes late, so what? Nobody's going to notice. Report now, five minutes overdue. Report now, five minutes overdue. Alarm off, please, Gemini. You programmed Gemini to do that, didn't you? We worked on it together. Incoming alert from National Cardiac Monitor. Fatality confirmed in Western Hypermare. The third death this month. That makes three. Oh, but if it's murder, that's a police matter. Like smoking a cigarette without a license or weather theft or time felch. The professor wanted to be informed. <sighs> OK, I suppose I'll trudge down and oh, get no, it. Oh, I'll go. I'll go and see him now. I'll get right on it. This is a level three Kent alert. There's absolutely no time to waste. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'm putting on some lipstick. Morning, Professor. Mm, morning. Oh, something wrong? Oh, you know, I used to split atoms, now I'm pairing up socks. Let me give you a group hug. Well, oh, really, Paula, I'm fine. I'll give you one anyway. Mm. 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 So what have you... Oh, give me a minute. Mm. <sighs> what have you got there? Another death in Western Hypermare. There's a spectrograph report. Oh, and an interesting pattern from the spirograph, too. Mm, very pretty. Uh, this death's had a D notice slapped onto it. You mean a don't notice? Yes. <laughs> exact death location, please, Gemini. Clench vegetarian colony. I'm going through to control room. Gemini, get me everything we've got on that colony. I'm obeying. But what about this washing? Fifty-minute boil wash. But there's non-fast colours in there. That's a risk we'll have to take. <laughs> Hide in, in greenhouse. Listen to me, my Vegemites. I want this entire colony searched from top to bottom and side to side. Yes, Check the main dome. Search every corner. Yes, Dr. Ah, Miss Matthews, any news? Yes, Doctor. We located one of the SKPs. Good. And? They've been neutralised. Neutralised to death, I hope. Yes. Good. That just leaves our good friend Marcus. Whatever happens, I want him found. Yes, Doctor. Um, found to death? Is there any other way? I'll search the greenhouse. <gasps> Dr. Clench. Oh, there you are, Marcus. Leaving us so soon. Hasn't the colony provided you with everything you need? Nuts, berries, water burgers? I can't take it anymore. I need meat. Steak, chops, mince. Mince, I tell you. Mince is murder, Marcus. <laughs> ah. It seems your presence is required inside the cactus room. 
required. Required. To death. <laughs> No. Oh, ow. Oh, ow. Oh, ow. Goodbye, Marcus. Just the facts, please, Gemini. The Clench Vegetarian Colony was established in 2088 by Dr. Joseph Clench. Veggie? What? Terrians. Strange chaps. Come meal times, they leave their meat on the side of their plates. Don't they realize the sacrifice those animals have made? Most vegetarians were wiped out during the withering. Now they're an endangered species, like pigeons and the gays. So what do they eat? Oh, vegetables, mainly. Oh, and Soylent Beige. <laughs> Used to quite enjoy Soylent Beige myself, until I realized, to my horror, it was actually made from soya beans. All this meat talk's making me hungry. <laughs> Selected a rare steak cone with liver. Anyone else for an instant meat cone? Uh, not now, Rory. Mm. A vegetarian would see no difference between you eating that meat or you taking a knife and fork and tucking into your own buttock. Uh, but who is this Dr. Clench? He's developing some kind of edible cactus. Says here it's the biggest edible breakthrough since the professor here discovered that sandwich which cures cancer. Marmalade and cucumber. It was under my nose the whole time. Clinch has got heavy government funding, but it's all very shush-shush. Incoming report. Force fatality confirmed at Clinch Vegetarian Colony. That makes four. That does it. Rory, there's only one sensible course of action. Someone has to poke their nose into that cactus. Someone from Kent. And this is my lunar-powered greenhouse. Harnessing the moon's heat for peaceful purposes. But really, Mr. Lawson, I don't see how my work would interest anybody from Kent. Well, Kent is a highly specialized organization dedicated to maintaining a balanced ecology. Don't you do laundry as well? Yes. What exactly are you growing in all these little pots? Allow me to introduce you to Quimp. Quimp? Quimp. A revolutionary new strain of cacti. We're launching it as a meat substitute. Do try a slice. Oh, thank you. We call it make-believe beef. We're developing a whole range. Sham ham, proxy mutton, never chicken, disingenuous ox. Oh, palatable, I suppose. But why replace meat in the first place? Meat's lovely. You are, of course, entitled to your backward opinion. But what if all the chickens dried up? What if there were some kind of cattleclasm, or even another withering? Oh, my God. Then Quimp would be there, waiting in the shadows to take over. I suppose it sounds innocent enough when you put it like that. Oh, we vegetarians aren't so strange. Ideally, I'd like to grow a cactus with bones and gristle and wings. I've calmed him down, but I can't... My assistant, Miss Matthews, Mr. Rory Lawson. He's from Kent. Oh, Good morning, Mr. Lawson. Miss Matthews, you are beautiful. <laughs> what say we have dinner tonight? Your place? And afterwards, who knows? Maybe a little marriage? I never leave the colony. The meaty world holds no charm for me. Was there anything else? Uh, no, thank you, Doctor. I'll bid you good day. Miss Matthews, I hope to see much more of you. By which I mean see you in a swimsuit or possibly a lacy... Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good day, Mr. Lawson. Oh. What did you just put in your pocket? M my hand. So why did you say... Oh, ouch. My pockets are very tight. Good morning. Miss Matthews? Yes, Dr. Clench. I don't think that young man's pockets are as tight as you would have us believe. Count the cacti. No, 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 Nebras! But surely, Sir Ronald, as government minister with unusual portfolio, acting on the advice of people from Kent is one of your jobs. I'll thank you not to describe my jobs, Nebras. You must close that colony down. I'll do no such thing! And stop scratching your hand, boy. A year ago, nobody had even heard of Clench. 
Then he discovers an edible cactus with huge implications for the third world, where they're not such fussy eaters. He's awarded lavish government funding whilst Kent's funds are halved. By 50%. Mm, yes. Well, I've examined that cactus. Quimp couldn't possibly be used as human food. It's far too high in polyangiptomobes. Examined? How? I, uh, swiped a sample. So, there are thieves at work in Kent. You're such a clown, Nibbleoff. What? I'm... I'm not... I'm not a clown. 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 No son of mine goes into the sciences. But, Father, please... He'll be a clown. Like me. Like your grandfather. Like your great-grandfather. Like your great-great-grandfather. And like your mum. That's right, son. A clown. 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 No, I shall not clown. I shall not clown. I shall not clown. Clown. No, 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 Lars. Are you even listening to me? Mm. Well, oh, I don't need to listen to know that you're droning on in the background. Well, really. Sir I'm... Ronald, are you familiar with the Watford Peaks, Britain's newest mountain range? No. Formed during that fifth ice age we had last October bank holiday. It consists of just three mountains, Benny Hill, Double Bluff and Moot Point. About a year ago, a meteor fell at the foot of Benny Hill. A meteor? I remember. From space, wasn't it? That's right. And Benny Hill is the exact location where Clench made his first quimp sighting. Pure coincidence. Bollocks, sir. Quimp spells doom, sir. Q-U-I-M-P, doom. I stick my reputation on it. Not a very high stake, is it? Your reputation? Not any more. I make one mistake. Does that mean I have to spend the rest of my life paying for it? You did evaporate the Isle of Wight. I'd like to do what I can, but I'm afraid I can't. Not until you get me something specific. Oh, I'll get you proof. Proof that I'm right. Proof that Quimp is deadly. Proof that our days are numbered. Ah, oh, that reminds me, Nimrod. When will my shirts be ready? Wednesday. I've nearly finished the packing, Professor. Good. Remember, when we infiltrate this colony, we must act like two very devout vegetarians. The tiniest slip-up could prove fatal. Don't worry. I understand. What's that you're packing? Sausages. Cumberland. Three pound. Are you insensate? But... but uh, I'd die without sausages. Leave them. Please, Paula. Do it for me. Of course. Oh, I'm sorry. You must think I'm such an idiot. No, of course not. Black pudding isn't meat, is it? It's certainly got some animal in it. Oh, oh, there you go. Rabbits definitely aren't meat, though, are they? They're, they're mainly meat, yes. You'd better take them both. You're a very brave girl, Paula. Where's Harry got to? Did you ask him to turn down his voice box? It's not so easy, Paula. Oh, but it's too loud. You are his boss. Yes, but if it weren't for me and my damned scientific curiosity, there wouldn't have been that terrible accident. There'd be no need for him to have a voice box, or use a hover chair, or wee into a bag. No, he used to do that before. Did he? Shh, here he comes. Ah, oh, Professor! There you are! Oh, Christ. Oh, Harry! Super! <laughs> How are you? In agony, as usual, my still vibrant mind trapped in a mangled body, wasting away in this damn chair through no fault of my own. Oh, nonsense, Harry. You're the same man you ever wear. When I look at you, I don't notice whether or not you're in a chair. I just think you're walking along, sitting down. What have you got there, Harry? It's my snoz cam. A camera that fits right inside your nostril. The very latest in nasal optics! Have you tested it? No, Professor! Unlike you, I no longer have the luxury of a nose! I'll just pop it up for you, Professor! <laughs> ah! Oh, ooh! Ah, oh, ooh! <laughs> Super! Right, w what now? The shutter is triggered by sniffing! Will you take me with your nose, Professor? All right. Let me just focus, and... Ooh, quite ingenious. And how do I remove it? It's only a prototype! I see. Super. 
Super. This will be your room here at the colony. Thank you, Dr. Clench. Very nice. It's always a pleasure to welcome new members to the colony, Mr... Neb... Neb... Well, Mr. Neb, Neb, I hope the room is to your satisfaction. Mmm, super. Everything looks very fully funded. This dial controls the room's temperature. This dial regulates the colour scheme. But I'm afraid the room's vibe dial is stuck on indifferent. Would you like me to get someone to fix that? No, Not bothered. bothered. Oh, uh, allow me to introduce Paula. Your wife? Oh, God, no. My granddaughter. What? Tell me, Miss Nebneb, do you practice vegetarianism, veganism, or macrobiotica? Uh, it's wrong to eat animals, even though they are made of meat? Yes. Yes, that's right. We believe carrots point the way forward. Are you all right, Mr. Nebneb? Oh, yes. Just got a slight snuffle. And, uh click, and a, a bit of a whir. Um, I see. I hope you don't mind sharing a room. No, that's fabulous. Fine. It's fine. I have nothing my grandfather hasn't seen before. He used to bath me until I was quite old. What? I would just make a note of anything you take from the mini bar. Oh, of course. Well, I'll let you settle in. Tomorrow we will commence your reprogramming. Um, did you say reprogramming? Of course. To truly love vegetables, one must first think like one. A vegetable. And now on BBC Zero, there's another chance to see an intense beam of white light. Seen it. I'm hungry! Veal trifle cone, please, Gemini! Please go to the food hall. Mmm! I'll just feed it into my neck mouth! <coughs> a meat cone for you, Rory! Oh, just two cherry tomatoes and a stick of what's happening to me. Rory! Why do you keep scratching your hand? Because it's... itchy. Night falls, and with it comes the darkness, blacking out the light and bringing the night. Mm. There's something dreadfully wrong here, Paula. I know. I hate bunk beds. No, it's more than that. You mean the bunk chairs? No, it's the colonists. Didn't you see them? It's like they've been mesmerized, or drugged, or some terrible combination of the two. Drugmerized? They've been drugmerized. Yes. This door's been locked. We're trapped. Just the two of us. Now the desperado, Paula, because I have just spotted our old friend, Mr. Ventilation Shaft Duct Panel, Esquire. O-B-E. I'll have these wing nuts off in a jiffy. <laughs> What is it, Harry? Can't you see I'm involved in some very important work? You're ironing shoes! Well, exactly. They won't iron themselves. They're broken. I'd like you to eat these! S sausages Cumberland! Three pound! If you're still one of us, you'll eat them and love them! But... But the contents of those sausages used to be a, a breathing thing. A nose, probably. Sausage contents confirmed. Prime hog snout. Don't you see, Harry? I changed. I couldn't eat a nose. I couldn't eat a chin or a leg or a back or even a bum. Because I am a vegan... A vega... How do you say it? Vegetarian! Yes. I am one of those. The colonists are ready for you, Doctor. Well, my Vegemites, your stay at the colony is over. You will inform your family and friends that your time here has made you happy, clear-thinking, and dynamic. Yes, Doctor. You will return home. You will plant more quimp seeds, 
but you will not reveal their location to anyone. Yes, Doctor, we will. But you, you will reveal the seed's location? No, Doctor, we won't. Good, just so long as there's no misunderstanding. Yes, Doctor, we will. Hang on, I'm confused now. Does that mean that you will reveal the location of the seed? This is far worse than I suspected. What are we going to do? I know. What? Let's have a big hug. No, not now. Get off. Miss Matthews, fetch the seeds, if you please. Right away, Doctor. These people have had their brains washed, rinsed, conditioned, and put through some kind of mangle, then ironed, folded, and put in an airing cupboard. A mind airing cupboard. I'm drifting, but we must act. They're completely oblivious to the world around them. Hey, you! What are you doing behind that crate? Oh, lovely evening, isn't it? Hi, Mr. Nebneb, Miss Nebneb. Spying? No, no, uh, not at all. Forgive me, Doctor. I suffer from post-withering insomnia. My daughter has the same thing. I thought you said she was your granddaughter. No. Well, yes, that is, she is my daughter, and I think she's grand, so I sometimes refer to her as my granddaughter. Bit confusing. See that now. Think nothing of it. One and two here will take you back to your cell. You're your room! Super. Come along then, Paula. Wait, my handbag. Oh, oops! <gasps> I'm sorry, Professor. I was weak. Professor, of course. Professor Nebulous. Still blowing up bits of Britain? I make one tiny mistake. The Professor has two Nobel Prizes under his belt. Search them! Yes, Doctor, I will. Oh, oh! No prizes. Good. Two, have this bacon burned. And stand well back. <laughs> It seems we are required within the cactus room. Good Lord! Hey, you! What are you doing? Evening, Miss Matthews. Mr. Lawson. I thought you'd gone back to Kent. What are you doing here? Why, Miss Matthews, your pretty nose all on its own would be capable of dragging any man back. Professor! What is it? That Paula is Quimp. But is it human? Or is it a cactus? It's both. And yet neither? No, it's both. It's humanoid and cactilinear. Well, Clench... Won't you introduce us to your succulent friend? I can make my own introductions, Professor. I am Quim, the ultimate cactus. And once a man feels my prick, he becomes my slave. You arrived on that meteor, didn't you? Originating, if I'm not mistaken, in the constellation of Gondomar. I see you know your cactuses. It's cacti, isn't it? I've lost my thread now. My dear Nebulous, you are dealing with something far beyond your understanding. Nothing is beyond my understanding. I don't know what you mean. Across the twelve and a half continents, Quimp will force the human race to turn vegetarian. Lack of meat will make them weak. Docile, easily controlled. It won't be as simple as that, you know. The inhabitants of Earth are not sheep. That is, the human inhabitants aren't sheep. The sheep are sheep, obviously. The human race will become our slave gardeners. And what about me? Your will is strong, Nebulous. Your brain cannot be washed. You shall fulfill mankind's ultimate destiny as compost. And what about me? You're too thick to brainwash. Another one for the compost heap. Kill them, Clench. Rory. Hello, Paula. Professor. I knew you'd come and save us. That's it, Rory. Point your gun at them. That's no gun. 
That's a carrot. Rory, no, don't be a fool. Drop that carrot and kick it across to me. No, it's too late, Professor. It's delicious. Rory is one of us now. So, Professor, that would appear to be that. Any last requests? Yes. I'd just like to turn that valve on. What? Stop it, Nebulous! Not the sprinkler system! No! Turn off the water sprinklers! What? what, what what's happening? I'm punching you in the face! Oof. Well done, Professor! I can't stand rain! Water destroys me! Even though I am a plant! No! As I anticipated, all the colonists have fainted. Professor, you were magnificent! No pot plant gets the better of me. <coughs> Ooh, oh, looks like Rory's mm. coming too. Rory! Mm. Come on, Rory! Oh. Snap out of it! It's all right. Paula, I'm conscious. Sure. Yeah. Ah, yes. Something... something horrible happened. I... I fancied a salad. Don't worry, Rory. It won't happen again. <sighs> Damn you, Nebulous. No, damn you, Clench. There'll be no more government funding where you're going. Prison. You know, I, I still don't understand. How, how did you destroy the quimp? As any gardener knows, Rory, the only sure way to kill a cactus is to overwater it. Look, quimp has sort of dissolved. Tragedy, really. Quimp was one of the most intelligent beings in the universe. Hmm. Smells like shit now, though. Well, yes, does a bit. Looks like it, too. Oh, damn. I've taken a photo of it now. <laughs>